Yeah, absolutely. So we have a very interesting uh, talk actually coming up. Uh, you already see it a little bit on the logo. So we're going to be, Andreas is actually going to be talking about how he is building and prototyping CDK for Azure. Uh, so, you know, you've seen already throughout the day, of course, that there's various flavors of uh, of CDK. There's kind of the vanilla CDK, right, that, that, uh, that was started before. There's CD skates, right, for Kubernetes. But people are even taking it to the next level and, and trying to integrate this, for example, with Azure. So I'm actually personally very excited for this talk, very curious how that's working and how that, uh, that innovation is happening. So yeah, I suggest we hand it over to Andreas. Enjoy. Welcome, everyone, and thanks for attending th this talk at CDK Day 2020. I am Andreas Heumeyer, Senior Engineering Lead at a group called Commercial Software Engineering at Microsoft. And I want to highlight a project I did lately called ARMKit. This is a quick story of how to prototype a CDK for Azure. But let's begin at the start. I have an ongoing discussion on cloud infrastructure as code for some years now uh, with a friend of mine who's working at the Terraform CDK these days. And uh, having had this journey myself for years using cloud DSLs from Troposphere to even end up building my own in Ruby, ARMKit V1, uh, one reoccurring weakness I felt in all was they are rebuilding the cloud providers API objects instead of directly generating them using their own definitions. So they were always too late on the new stuff or getting unstable in adapting too fast. Another one is I barely found any testing frameworks in place, which could keep up uh, on the ever-changing tooling or they are being so simple that it feels like building the framework from scratch again. Uh, and then there was CDA, CDKs coming up, promising more. And there was the question about Azure. We didn't find a proper approach so far. Uh, so we just thought uh, we started ourselves. And uh, next up, I want to outline in a few slides the principles to get going and what we learned so far from it. So what? So where to start? Uh, we start with the JSON schema. Uh, most providers have one um, where they describe their API resource objects. Let's take a look. Here we see in an example of the Azure schema route, all services and resources with their different versions are cross-referenced in sub-documents from here. And uh, this is a source of truth we need to build our CDK code on. Once we have the resource schemas located, in the next step was unifying the scatter pieces with all the relative and absolute references in it as one. Using JSON schema ref, uh, we walked through the root schema from the start and expanded all reference docs and sub documents. We replaced our relative references with absolute file path so we can use them properly for translation later as shown in the example of the data factory identity resource below. I think we're missing something in the example as shown below definition JSON expression is a global catch allowing type expressions to the schema. Meaning if it's not a defined resource here, it's a regex defined somewhere else. This is more like a fallback and we don't need to replace that. Having a full resource schema we, uh, with, about refer with absolute references, we are ready to start translating the schema to TypeScript using awesome GSII code maker. We're just standing on the, uh, on the shoulders of AWS CDK, Kubernetes CDK and others. Uh, we took one resource scope, a three node, as a class and iterating over all resource types and uh, resources and types in it, writing out one after another. This leaves us with TypeScript classes describing the resource and types we took from the schema, uh, shown previously as an example from the data factory identity. 
having this one large resolve schema in front of us to translate, we found large schemas are not necessarily fully consistent in its structure. So there was still a lot of bumpers on the road for us. Instead of trying to resolve all the all of them at once, uh, we decided it could it, it would be faster to splice to sp uh, splice the fish and um, introducing configurable schemas parts from the root schema shown previously, which are way easier to back and the prefix in a smaller scope. Successfully resolved this, we are able we are able to build now our first construct. The hello world in the world of CDKs is a simple storage account. Uh, we see the import of all the packages and all the modules needed to impl implement a storage blob named my storage 45 2442 KDA in West Europe. Uh, on the last line in the example, we instantiate and run the newly defined hello world ARM kit uh, using CDK out the target file for our template code. We take a look at the CDK out file. Uh, we see the generated ARM template JSON now. Uh, with my storage in West Europe has been pro properly generated and it's ready to deploy. Uh, of course, a ZCLI validate would help us on validation to make sure we are right here. For those about uh, start building right away, uh, here are some words on caution. Uh, we are just about starting. This is a just a first step to demonstrate how to start with a CDK-like approach on Azure. Uh, this is incomplete in translating the whole schema yet. The, we we missing the full test suite and a construct library. And we are still working on having multi-language support for uh, or using with GSII. Um, so we need and looking for your help, ideas and support to make this fully functional and to our goal to get this accepted as an Azure open source software project Please create this with us. With the next slide, I want to give a short glimpse of on, or, what I'm looking for in the future of not just the Azure CD case and uh, what could be on even tomorrow. Since providing a CDK, not just for Azure, but for all cloud tool providers is open up major opportunities. We could be able to unify an infrastructure platform approach at native languages. Describing cloud infrastructure, including other service platforms like Azure DevOps, Kubernetes, and others in one native language like Python or TypeScript, and or simply adding your small helpers directly to the infrastructure code. Drive testing strategy, this is uh, one of my major topics um, as they are used in programming languages. I want to reuse my testing frameworks I have for native languages uh, to test my infrastructure, uh, to provide the right scopes and tooling around that, and uh, generating tests from my infrastructure code before deployment and reuse them later if I change something. Uh, rely on a single construct used on multiple platforms building general generalizable objects. These are big dreams so far, but uh, we have native language interfaces now, so it's a developer's world again. Interoperability on different tools using the same language, uh, for example, generating ARM templates or Terraform combining ARMcat and CDKTF opens up a lot of possibilities. With this, uh, thank you for watching, and if you feel like you want to get your feet wet in helping building the Azure CDK, reach out to me directly or come contribute at GitHub, JetX, ARMKit, and thank you very, very much.